Hello, welcome everybody to our second episode of Storybook Musical Theater Behind the Curtains. It's your chance to get a little insight about what goes on at Storybook Behind the Scenes with our favorite cast. And this week is our cast of Princess and the Pea. I am Rachel Henry. I'm going to be your host this morning. It's still morning. Um, so please, if you are watching live with us, please comment or ask any questions that you may have of us. We will hopefully get to all of your questions. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, please, please, if you can, visit all of our social medias. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're also on YouTube. And our storybook page is storybookmusical.org, where you can donate with our PayPal. We'd love to keep bringing live theater to the children of the greater Philadelphia area for the next 28 years. And it's been especially hard with this pandemic going on. Um, but hopefully we can continue doing that. So please donate with PayPal at storybookmusical.org. Hello. So let's bring on a couple of the actors. And remember, please ask us anything that you would like to know. We're here for you. So let's start off. Let's go in order of appearance. Let's see. We'll start off with the king of the realm, King Edward. This is David Mulholland. Hello, David. Hello. How do you do to everybody? Hello. And we'll go to his... Partner in crime, Queen Wendelin, Miss Marianne Bucci. Hello, everybody. Hello, yeah. David. Hello, Rachel. Hello. Hello. Uh, we don't have our lovely prince with us today. He yeah. is busy at Vanderbilt, being all smart and proper, but he's great. <laughs> we miss him, Jacob. So we'll move on to our first princess of the day, Miss Christina Coya, who played lovely princess Jersey Lee. Hi. Hello. Hi, Chris. Hey, Chris. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. And last but not least, the princess of the hour, the one with the P, <laughs> Miss Princess Georgiana. Laura. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Great. Good to see so, everyone. Good to see everyone. Hi, Laura. Yeah. So, I hope everybody. all of you have been keeping safe and well in this crazy, crazy times, especially with Absolutely. tropical storms and everything almost causing power outages and stuff. So, <laughs> thanks for all joining us. It's good Hi. to be here. Following all the rules. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I almost didn't make it because of the power outage, but I'm here. Aw. Uh, Miss Aileen says hello to everybody. We all hello, know Aileen. Aileen. You all know Aileen from our last episode with Wizard of Oz. If you have missed it, it is on our Facebook and YouTube pages as well. So please watch that one. All right. So let's get started in a little discussion, get things rolling. Um, so before you, you get cast, uh, we all have to go through an audition process to get here. So for those of the viewers that don't know what it's like, let's talk a little bit about the auditions. Like, how did you find out about Storybook? What's kind of like your warm-up process? Let's talk a little bit about that, if anybody wants to go first. <laughs> well, that should be the girls, because the girls, all right. David and I have been around forever. Well, David, <laughs> yes. Laura, Christina. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I feel like I probably saw it on Theater Philadelphia first. Um, and I remember finding the giant and going. <laughs> and um, I, I'm trying to remember what I sang for the audition. Um, something soprano y. Um, Something pretty. <laughs> I think I sang a quiet thing, maybe from Floor of the Red Menace. I, I can't, I honestly can't remember. No, no, no. Maybe I can How Could I Ever Know from The Secret Garden. It was one of those two. Um, and it was really fun. I, was, I remember feeling super warm and welcome right away. You know, sometimes you walk into an audition room and you're just like, oh, no, thanks. I don't like, can I just leave right away? But I didn't feel that way at all. It was of and um, after I sang, I got to read some sides. And um, 
I got to read it like sneaky, like, oh, we're going to do this exercise that people haven't had. And I was like, oh, that's when it made me feel like really excited. Like maybe I did something right. Yes. <laughs> that's right. I mean, I remember reading with Aileen. Yes. Aileen's our, our reader. Chris, how about you? Um, it's funny you bring up the sides because my most vivid memory of this audition specifically was um, during the callback and I got to read for Jersey Lee the very first time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what you guys wanted out of me. Uh, so I, you were just like, oh, just something ridiculous sounding. I'm like, okay, sure. And I think, was I reading? No, I don't know. Whoever I was reading with at the time. I think time, you were reading against Jacob. I think was I was okay. by then, yeah. Because I think I scared him. <laughs> Whoever I was reading with like jumped back 10 feet when I opened my mouth to try Jersey Lee for the first time. So I that will always live on in my heart. Oh, <laughs> Now, what are some ways uh, that you prepare yourself for different auditions? Like, how do you choose which song or which monologue you choose? Or how do you get away those jitters that you usually get? Because I know I still get jitters, so. I don't think you ever get rid of the jitters. No. I mean, I've been doing this, most of us have been doing this for years and years and years. And every audition is a new beginning. So, you know, you go in there and you want to put your best foot forward. And, First thing that goes through your mind is, did I vocalize today? Do I need to get some water? Did I drink too much water? Does this outfit look okay? Does my makeup look all right? Am I gonna remember my lines? So it's 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 all of that. And, and basically, once you open your mouth, then you're good. But just before that, it, it's chaos in your mind. What do you, you think? Never, you never know what to expect from behind the table, the people that you're auditioning for. Um, I've had auditions where people were attentive and connected and seemed to be enjoying what I was doing. And I've had auditions where partway into the audition, you realize, oh, they're ordering lunch. So, <laughs> in there. And it, what goes on in your head during all that is to just remain focused on what you're doing and true to what you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And that way you feel you've given your best, no matter whether or not the person on the other side of the table has really paid attention to you. But most of the time, people are very courteous when you audition and make you feel they want you to do your best, which is great. Yeah. Yes. One of the things you always have to remember when you go into an audition is that whether or not you get that role may not depend on whether you were wonderful or not. It may be they're looking for someone specific. Mm -hmm. And you may have done a wonderful audition and absolutely perfect, but you don't match what they have in their mind for that part. So. You should never take things like that personally and always go in knowing that, you know, if it's meant to be, it will be. And, you know, if, if you're right for the part, they'll pick you. It's not, if they don't pick you, it doesn't mean that you're not good. It just means that they had something else in mind. Yeah. Or you discovered true. you're uh, the leading lady that you might be playing opposite is five foot nine and you're five foot seven. Yeah. And so there's a good chance you're not going to come out of that audition with the job because you're going to have to wear platform shoes in order to <laughs> walk around with her. So. Yeah. Well, I'm just uh, We have a comment that, Christina, your voice was amazing, like Lena Lamont as a princess. Uh, yes. I don't know if I'd call that amazing. <laughs> Intriguing, maybe. Intriguing. <laughs> Were there I any, think, uh, sorry, David, were there any funny auditions that you had or audition failures that you've had in the past? Any good ones? Oh, yeah, I had one recently I would love to share. <laughs> um, we're all ears. And this is, I'm not going to humble brag because I'm not going to name drop here, but I had a pretty big audition um, that I was a little nervous about going into. And it was the first time performing in front of this casting director that I'd always wanted to perform in front of. And uh, I did a funny song. Um, <laughs> and I guess they weren't expecting it. The piano player in the audition um, started laughing and she knocked my binder off of the piano. <laughs> she was laughing so hard and I had to stop. <laughs> it was, um, so I don't know if I'm proud of that or I'm embarrassed by that, but it happened. And, and proud. I, I guess, definitely I don't know. Proud. Yeah, definitely, be proud. They definitely <laughs> talked about that later. Aww. They will remember you. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Good stories. I had one years ago where I auditioned for production of Oklahoma for Will. And they had me come back and they were, had me, asked me to sing Kansas City, which is, you know, his big number. And I started to sing it and completely went up on the lyrics. 
and some reason I transferred into Swedish. <laughs> thinking they'll stop me and they never stopped me they no. let me sing the entire song in my version of Swedish they had a great time I didn't get cast but it still was a good audition you didn't get cast? no and I could have been to Swedish Bill Parker uh, I wish I was there I love it when like oh, I know. <laughs> oh, Eleanor wants to know, Chris, was the accompanist Gina by any chance? Question mark. <clears throat> you know, Eleanor, I think it it might have been. Probably Gina Shikara. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Yeah. She would laugh that hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stan says, we heart you, David. Yes, we all oh, heart David. I love we you, all miss you too, Stan. We miss you, Stan. Stan used to be work at Storybook. So we missed Stan yes. many, many years ago. All right, so let's move on. Let's talk about the show a little bit. This beautiful cast here, this opening here. Uh, <laughs> let's see. David and Marianne, you've done this show multiple, multiple times. Yes, we have. I have no idea how many. Uh, uh, way, too, way too many. Since, it's hysterical. I mean, since I just the beginning. You, David, but you know that. <laughs> We've been married, we've been husband and wife so many times in shows, Miriam, we should just have common law. At Absolutely. This point. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, every time, how does it change a little bit? Does your relationship with your, your son, Prince Louis, change every time? Or um, what little touches do you put in every time to make it a little bit different? I think you always try to play off the person, you know, the other character that you're working with. And of course, we're all, you know, they're all different. Every I've had many, many, many sons, and um, they've all been very different. Um, but I, I don't know. It's just when you're working it, when you're doing things, it kind of comes to you. It kind of flows. There may be something that you're doing that with one person that you don't really feel will work with this one, but then something comes to your mind and then you do it. Um, I don't remember if you if you remember the one show where that one oh, line came Marianne. in. Fix your uh, camera. Oh my god, <laughs> my camera fell. Okay, okay. Didn't do hey. that on purpose. <laughs> but the show where um, the line came in after um, Jersey Lee says, I'm so scared of thunder and lightning, and I go, Me too. That happened because the person that was playing that role really, really came out like, like you know, I'm so afraid of thunder and lightning, and really, really loud, and I go, me too. It was just an automatic kind of thing that was like, oh my God, you just broke my eardrum. And it just works, so it stayed. So little things like that. David does that all the time. That's Yes, like especially the line, his back, what's wrong with your back? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's written in the show, but we just love it anyway. Yeah. I think the best part of working with somebody new, if you're repeating a role, is you suddenly get to listen with fresh ears. Mm. It's the most exciting thing when you have old memories or old set patterns, and then you're working with someone new and you're getting to know them, and something that they say to you triggers a completely different reaction than you might have had before. I mean, that's to me, that's the most exciting part of it all is, is, is the listening through rehearsal process and when you're on stage. But if you just if you're confident and solid and on your feet and you listen, everything informs you. It's like it, you might react a little differently each day, but it's because someone is giving you something that, that just makes your eyes open or makes you think within the character. So that's great fun. I think it's also fun with you and your song with Prince Lewis that you get to... <laughs> Each each one gets get to, to adjust each it a little other. bit, yes, and, he, get to adjust and he has to repeat whatever I do. So. Yes, I know you yeah. and Jacob had a lot of fun with. Oh, that. we had a ball! I just like adored doing that song with him because. I know Laura and I were backstage. Always. I was backstage <laughs> watching was one of my favorite moments of the show because. I never knew it was going to come out of David, movement-wise and sound-wise. And Jacob was amazing at copying it. Oh, my God. Um, and it was hilarious. I loved it. Oh, the things I love the most when you and David come out on stage after he's taken you for a walk around. And he always has some new thing that he's saying. Mm -hmm. 
as he's walking on the stage. And we're all just sitting there waiting to see what the look out of David's mouth today. Something and about Humpty Dumpty. There, and I'm supposed to be serious. And I'm like, it, it's really hard sometimes just to awesome. keep a straight face. Oh, and the, the horse always yes, had the horse a, a new name this. every yes. day. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, as long as you stay in character and in the show, if there's time and someone's kind enough to give you the time to sort of toss something out, then it's always right, you know? So you can always be surprised by yourself, but you can surprise someone else on stage, but it doesn't take them away. Yes. You know what I mean? It's still within a scene or it's still, that's a great gift to yes. be able to be allowed to do that, you know? There's some shows where you can't, or you have a great desire to do it because you've got a great something in your head and it would fill that little moment. And then you realize this is just going to slow things down or it's just going to kill the moment. So you have to sort of edit yourself from opening your big mouth and tossing out a line. <laughs> well, we have a... Not that we're allowed to do that all the time. That's the lines that you throw out though. It's permission. Yes, you know, permission. if the director says there's a moment here where you, if you want to fill a little bit, you know, feel free. And if you feel you have the trust yeah. from the director and the other actors, then, then it just makes it such a joyous feeling. We have a question from one of our viewers, Della. She said, speaking of thunder and lightning, have you ever had to deal with bizarre weather affecting a show? And how are the actors in Storybook doing after the storm? Thank you for your question. Yes. Uh, storybook is doing okay. We didn't lose any thing. I don't think we had any flooding, so thank goodness for that. Um, but I know a couple of you guys had a power outage and were afraid that you weren't going to make it today, so we're yeah. glad that you made it. That was me. I lost it for 29 hours. Thank you very much. Oof. As for crazy weather, uh, the only thing that I can think of with Storybook was we had really bad snowstorms during Elves and the Shoemaker, almost like every day during rehearsal. Um, and we had to cancel a couple of shows. And there's also one time during, we do a uh, Pinocchio a while back where we had to cancel one of the shows and then fit everybody into the last show. Um, and it was at the Mitchell Performing Arts Center and people were just like, don't tell the fire marshal, but they were sitting in the aisles and they were smushed in as finely packed as we could do. But thankfully it has not been too bad at Storybook. Thankfully, knock on wood, we've had pretty good. I remember um, once at Germantown Academy when we were on stage and there was a storm going on outside and it, was, it sounded like the whole building was rumbling. Unfortunately, there was no storm in the storyline. Otherwise, no. <laughs> but I, I remember that sitting there thinking, "Oh my goodness!" Thank you, director. Good. <laughs> you had to cancel rehearsals for Red Riding Hood due to the 1996 blizzard. Okay. Yes. There you go. Little yeah. did we know. So, uh, a little discussion for Lauren, Chris, Dina, since you've been a little quiet. We have very short rehearsal periods at Storybook. How, as a newcomer, do you deal with that? I know that you guys get the music and the script uh, about a month ahead of time, but talk, talk a little bit how you kind of prepare to come into this short process. I, I love it, actually. I think it's great. Um, I'd step up for someone who, you know, wants to learn in the process. Um, because there is a lot of prep work that you need to do ahead of time. Um, but if you put in that work, then it's like so, you know, so quick and you're ready to go with the show already. Um, and there's a little bit of that excitement of like, is everything going to go wrong <laughs> the first time? <laughs> um, I actually kind of really love that um, because you're not too set in a role that you've like rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. Um, so it keeps everything fresh, I think. Yes. yes, but there is a lot. I do a lot of listening to the track and the car on the way to rehearsal yeah. over and over between the different things that we had to sing. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with Laura. I actually really liked how short the rehearsal process was because I'm the same way. I If I sit too long with something, I overthink it. And having the role fresh and staying hyper-focused for those couple weeks, I think does does better 
um, because you, you do, everything is new and everything's exciting. And there is a youthful energy to our characters, especially because we're both these, you know, princess types. <laughs> so I think it, it actually was helpful um, to kind of be on your toes a little bit because you, you got that energy out. It came across to the audience that way. And of course you have the, the veteran cast here to help you out along the way. <laughs> it builds trust. <laughs> yes. It does. It does. I think it does. It's, it's always fun working with new people. Yeah. Well, I'm going to show a little small clip of Jacob from the beginning of the show, and we're going to discuss it. So let's have Yay. a look. I have battled dragons and I've conquered ogres tall. I tore each monster limb from limb and never flinched at all. I have faced the demons and defeated everyone and never rested till my work. My browser apparently doesn't support it. Aww. Which book was it? It was uh, Princess Bride right, oh, okay. from the beginning of the show. But you and David had to sit in the background and kind of chitter chatter back there. Was any good any good stories? What were you chitter chattering about back there? The storybook. The storybook. The yes. Tell, tell us about what's in those storybooks. You have three different different books during the show. What are actually in those books that are not Princess Bride? Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Yes. We have Winnie the Pooh. No, two of the books are Winnie the Pooh. One of them is words. It's yes, like it's a, like an alphabet. And, say, yeah. and we just sit there and, you know, pretend that something's interesting in there. And David's always there, making little wisecracks. <laughs> Marianne was always pointing out that like you'd have Pooh or Tigger, but she was always pointing them out as if they were a princess that we should consider for Jacob. <laughs> there you go. Why not? So, Go for Piglet. Mm. Yeah. Or Damien, or yeah. David's playing with his cards and trying to impress me with a card trick. And I'm going, you know, get out of here. Speaking of card tricks. And not and try not to upstage not to. anything that Jacob's doing downstage. That's so exactly. everything sort of stayed in a very small sort of thing because if let loose, the two of us could have like <laughs> taken over <laughs> during that sequence. That's and exactly, that's, take it down there. that's exactly my next question, David. Oh. How do you stop yourself from upstaging what's, <laughs> what's in the main focus? Because I know you had to sit a lot practicing your card tricks during a lot of scenes. So what kind of, what do you think of during those moments? What do you do to you stop yourself? Stay in character. You respect the actor who has the focus so that you never are doing anything that's going to make anybody's eye if they're overstage left and your center stage upstage. If you do something too big or out of character, the audience's eyes are gonna to move to you. So as long as you respect each other, then you contain what you're yearning to do <laughs> and sort of keep it, keep it small and keep it, you know, and just keep in mind that it's somebody else's turn. So just respect. Although from watching you multiple times, you know, backstage, I, I did love watching you Dory Marianne's song playing with the cards exactly on time to her, to her <laughs> song and doing little movements back there. So if you watch open the open, show. Open open open. Drop. Yes, don't drop. Once, only once, I think, when I was shuffling, did I hit and a whole slew of cards took off and landed on the floor. And I kept thinking, how do I crawl around? <laughs> Just be up so nobody ends up slipping on them and not draw any attention. And yeah. I sort of had to wait until the last minute and do it when focus was on me. So that, like, Miriam wasn't wondering, why is the audience laughing right now when I'm thinking <laughs> about my ambitions? <laughs> and, and great minds want to know, do your card tricks actually work, David? Well, Once <laughs> it did. <laughs> Once I think it was with you, Laura. I think it. I think there was a time, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's set up so that 
you know, you can put it in so that it's right. But then I think the director changed it so it got tucked into the deck mm -hmm. instead of put on top where it, you could show it and it was there. And one time for some reason when I tapped and flipped the card, I think we both, our eyes were both there. <laughs> <laughs> the right card. Yeah, everything once in a while works out. Yeah. Sometimes they don't. All right, we have a question. Uh, actors tend to have multiple jobs and talents. We know that Chris also writes songs. Which do you prefer doing, Chris? Which do I prefer? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I like being in shows better. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, but creativity kind of is one big blob. I feel like art itself is like one occupation. So. Mm performing, you're a singer, I mean, especially musical theater, you're a singer, you're a dancer, you're an actor, you're always doing something creative and artistic. So I don't know. I don't know if I would even separate them because they're kind of the same thing, but I, I, I like performing better. Well, going on with that, Christina, let's talk about your creativity. Oh, and no. Talk about uh, your <laughs> voice. So oh. Jersey Lee in the show has a very distinct characteristic where she Right. looks and acts like the perfect princess, but right. then she opens her mouth and a very <laughs> strange and interesting voice comes out, which, you know, you see never judge a book by its cover type of thing. Well, how did you get to develop this voice and how do you maintain it throughout the, the run of the show? Uh, funny enough, this voice was originally um, for a character in a murder mystery show, uh, which... Uh, I did on a whim, um, they, were, they were looking for something obnoxious and I was like, oh, I've got obnoxious, let's do it. And it was a character whose name was Bella and it was a 1920s roaring 20s murder mystery thing. And um, I was in this big flapper dress and it, everything was over the top. So I got used to speaking like that um, because I would have to do these full, I mean, murder mysteries are improvisational mostly. So speaking like that for so long, um, and I'd done a couple of those shows before I did this. So I think that's why I kind of had that voice ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I remember that murder mystery. I came to mm -hmm. see you in it. Mm -hmm. Oh I my remember, gosh. That's... Right, remember? And I didn't realize at the time that you had auditioned for Jersey Lee. And I remember at the end of the show when we were doing the meet, doing the meet and greets with you, um, I remember saying something to you about you would be perfect for this role <laughs> that's coming up in Jersey Lee. And that's when you told me that you had auditioned for it. I'm thinking, of course, of course. I had totally forgotten. I didn't know who you were. We had never met before. <laughs> that's right. that's right. uh, small worlds. But how do you how do you maintain that throughout the show? How do you not do you drink lots of water? Do you take yes. some pills? Yes, calls? you definitely drink a lot of water, um, and you definitely keep some cough drops on you. And then the the hardest thing to do is you need to be quiet backstage. And I mean, this is for all of us, even when we're not doing crazy voices. Um, when you put it all out on the stage, then you want to rest when you are off the stage. So it was it was very quiet backstage. And for all of our it was veterans. It's uh, amazing to me, Chris, um, hearing that, that, that pitch and that sound and that volume level at times, which was so much fun to respond to and react to, and then realize you also have this gorgeous voice. Oh, oh yeah. David. Voice. Thank um, you for setting this up. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> you, but really, it's, 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 you sort of stand in amazement thinking there's this like voice of an angel that comes out in this beautiful front and then there's this sound that you were able to accomplish without doing any damage, which was like, you just sort of stood in amazement at times well, during the show. David, you set it up so nicely. Oh, we're no. now going to listen to Christina sing so that way our storybook oh. audience can actually hear her lovely singing what voice that she has. So, Christina, please set it up for us. All right, so can everyone hear okay? Is this good? All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot back very far and hope that I don't blow out the speakers here because it's a very small room. So uh, <laughs> here we go. This is, um, this is a little piece. This is actually what I auditioned for the show with. So uh, let's see if I can get this to work. Oh, gosh. Everything's good. I hope I'm far enough away. Mm. 
cast you with a crazy voice. <laughs> and if you like what you heard there, please <clears throat> donate at PayPal at storybookmusical.org so that way we can continue bringing these lovely voices to everyone in our area. Yay! Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So, Laura, let's talk with you a little bit. <laughs> since, oh. since you are the princess with the P, uh, your storyline is kind of opposite from uh, Christina's here. Your character, Georgiana, doesn't really look or act like a true princess, but you really are one. So how do you kind of portray that when, when you're acting this role? How do you kind of get that out to the audience? Yeah, uh, I think... I just had fun with her, you know, allowed her to be a little bit um, unique, a little silly, a little bit willing to just like roll with the punches. Um, but also that, you know, she does have a little bit of what Jersey Lee has through her posture and through the way she speaks. She's still kind and proper to the king and queen, you know, when she first meets Queen. Queen Wendelin, she tries to, you know, curtsy very beautifully. And I, so I think you just had fun with her, and especially with Jacob, the scenes with him, I would make sure to like that she lets loose a little bit with him and then sort of puts on her more princess like self in front of the queen and trying to impress her. So just a little bit of combo of everything, you know, a little bit quirky, but also stands upright and still knows how to act around the other royalty. We have a comment from a person who's very close to Marianne. We, that was beautiful, Christine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We're glad that you're watching. Thanks. Uh, so... Speaking of Jacob and you, Laura, you had to kind of fall love at first sight head over heels with Jacob, would you say? Um, what kind of uh, measures of communication do you have with your scene partner in order to make yourselves feel comfortable with that, especially, you know, if you... I know in this show you didn't have to kiss, but it, in other shows, if you have to kiss, or how do you make sure that the audience is, is really seeing that love between the two of you? Communication, for sure. You always want to make sure you are not being standoffish with your scene partners and making sure to get to know them outside of the scene work as well. Um, one of the things that Jacob and I always did was because we would always have trouble with the duet with our words, we would like speed through them together backstage to make sure that we wouldn't mess it up the next time. Cause there were a couple of times we messed it up like close to when there was a performance 
going to be happening. And so we were both panicky that we were going to mess it up in front of an audience. So, you know, just having those little things together, making sure that you're connecting more than just a professional level. I mean, obviously you want to be professional, but you also want to be human and have the connection that way and not be afraid to, you know, really look into their eyes and really see them. Oh, you mean like this? Look at yes. this. <laughs> so cute. And and David and Marion, how is that different to kind of portray the the older, you know, more mature love between the two of you? Well, David and I have had a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other a long time at this point. Yes. We have. And actually some of that love is actually true. We I I think we are very good friends. And we've got that kind of a, of, a, of, a, of a friendship kind of love for each other. I mean, whenever I'm doing a show and David's in it, I'm like very excited because we have such a great rapport and um, I just sort of love, work. I love mutual, working with you, David. I'm so I love working with you too. It's like a mutual admiration society. It is. It is. You let me pick on you, which is really nice. <laughs> well, you do it so well, my dear. <laughs> I pick on you too. It's, it's sort of an interesting dynamic between the king and queen. Too, because, because the way it's written, the queen is sort of constantly jabbing the king, and and the danger is to make him this sort of pathetic or henpecked character. You know what I mean? Who's always talking? From, but I think approaching it that he is completely amused by her, her ambitions, and. And at times, like, you know, he speaks up to say, yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. But I think he adores her and has fun watching her try to connive. So it never becomes being beaten, beaten down by, like, her dismissal. And, uh, and we had a couple moments where we shared looking at each other with a smile. Or, and so hopefully it was clear that it was based in love. And you know whether or not we got along every second of the day, but you know. Yeah. And Laura says and that, of course, is bossy and not needy. Yes. So of course, and, and you know, so a lot of wives are, are bossy, and a lot of husbands just put up with it because they love her. So that's right. Eleanor said that she preside over your common law marriage. <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. And that the ladies can be the bridesmaids. There you go. Oh, Sounds good to me. Oh goodness. We've had so much good times with these shows. Yeah. Uh, Laura, let's talk about the big bedroom scene with the pee, because that's always. Oh, that's always, yeah. It's a, it's a monster of a song. Yes. Uh, but it's fun. Um, I sort of got into a pattern of doing things the same way, the same bumps or the same hits and breaks and stuff. It was, for myself to not be overwhelmed by the song. And I think to be able to have a pattern of like how I flub the pillow and when I decided the pee was moving where. Um, I think my most um, like memorable moment was when I realized I wanted to do one right under my butt so that I just like popped that up. Um, Our lovely and, music director saying the song, yes, yeah, yes the song. Um, it was so much fun. And once I finally like really got it down, it just flowed. And but I was always terrified that I was going to mess it up every single every single time we performed. I was like, it's going to go wrong this time. I know it's going to know it's going to just fall to pieces. But, Knock on wood, it never did. And hopefully, anyone who does the role again, it doesn't ever happen to them. Um, because it's one of those songs where if you miss like one moment, I think I did in a um, rehearsal once where I just like, missed a moment and it threw the rest of it completely off. Um, so, thankfully, that never happened in front of people. But yeah, it's really, it's really fun. It's, I'm not afraid of heights, so for me, it wasn't you know, to be up on that bed, and it's not really that high, but I could see where someone would be nervous if they didn't like heights. Um, and like crawling up the ladder was always a little bit wary because it's not attached, because um, it has to come down, obviously, the queen takes it away. Um, 
So that was a little terrifying sometimes that I might flip. So were you ever afraid um, of falling off the tall bed? Because it's very tiny. It's, it, it, it's small. It's narrow. Um, no, I wasn't. Once I was up there and settled, I, I never felt like I was going to fall off. Um, and every time I came off stage and they rolled me off, David was always there to help me down. So he's such a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's a very, very sturdy, sturdy bed. Too. It so is a very sturdy bed. It's definitely made of plywood. It's yeah. not mattresses. <laughs> yeah. so you don't have to worry about that. But Marianne, there, do you want to talk about your pee? No, the pee. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Beth, whenever I was going to have to use the pee, I would tuck it into the top of my costume. Because initially, the pee and the little vial of the sleeping potion would be set in the glass on the table. So when I pushed the the set on, all I had to do was reach in and grab them. But a couple of times it didn't work out well and I had my hands full of things when I went to go to the ladder. So I decided that I was going to put the vial in my sleeve and the pee in my costume. And uh, more than once, but I will tell you that one time that was hysterical, I went through the pee and it wasn't there. And I just went like, I'm looking all over the top of my costume for this pee, and I finally went, ah, oh, pee. <laughs> I pretended that the pee was in there, but I kept thinking the whole time, it's in there somewhere, and I'm going to move, and it's going to drop out of the bottom of my costume and bounce across the stage because it was one of those rubber balls. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only thing I could think of through that whole scene was like, oh my gosh, don't move too much because the pee's going to start bouncing across the stage. <laughs> Nancy is getting a kick out of you in there. <laughs> that and, and the time that I couldn't find the vial, that was another one. But uh, yeah, things happen sometimes. But but you learn to just go with, you know, go with it and just make it part of the bit. I do remember there was one time you couldn't find it. And so you just pretended that it was a really tiny pee that the audience could not see. But you yeah. could see yourself. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know... It's it's a it's a power of suggestion. Yes. I told them there's a pee there, so there's a pee there, whether they see it or not. Yes. So it, it, it works. I mean, it happens to all of us. Things things go on in the shows. People have no clue because as actors, we're very good at finding it. <laughs> Laura, <laughs> Laura, let's talk about that. Tell about us accident? Tell, tell us about an accident that might have happened during the show that the audience did not realize, but we backstage right. were in a big ado. Oh, so I don't even remember. I think it was in the second run of our performances, close to the end of the run in July, I believe. Um, but David and I come out. Um, is it the beginning of Act Two? Mm. Yes. That yes. Yep. Mm. So uh, we come out from behind the curtain, and David's always really great. He like opens the curtain for both of us, and we walk through. Well, one day. Somehow, the curtain got stuck on David's crown, yeah. and the crown flows back and hits me, boom, basically right in the eye, but I didn't know exactly where. And so I just, like, immediately, like, grabbed my eye. I don't even remember which eyeball it was anymore. <laughs> Um, it was your and, right eye. Yes. Yeah. Right yeah. and, and he looks at me and he's like, your contact's right there. So I like grab my contact and I'm holding my contact. As the scene's going on. As the scene is going on. So we still walk out and I have like tears streaming down my face, with, like my mascara running. And like no one knew that it had happened because we just kept going. And then I, you know, when I had a moment, I ran back and like looked in the mirror, checked my eyeball. It didn't fully hit my eye, so it was safe that way. But if it was just like right in the corner. Um, so scary. Yes, scary. I just remember you getting off stage right before your your duet with Jacob and just being like, ah, and I was like, oh my God. Yeah, and I was I was worried that it was gonna terrify the kids, like in the front of the rooms if they saw like tears streaming down my face. Like, why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> but it all was okay. I went to see, you know, a doctor and they kept everything well. They gave me an antibiotic just in case, but it never was anything um, bad. So we can have a good laugh about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Luckily. you're very professional just to keep going, not letting the kids know. So that's very nice. 
luckily most of these things that happen aren't that serious. That was very serious. We were very worried. But most of the time it's things like a missing key or the time my earring got stuck on the prince's shoulder and I couldn't get my head up and I had to take the earring off, leave it on his costume and continue the scene and just weird things that, that, that happened. But luckily not as serious as that was. Thank goodness. We have a question. Uh, what do you make your props out of? Hmm. Mm. I guess that's a question for me since I dealt with all of the props. Um, as we talked about earlier, the storybooks were just old uh, children's books that we put the fake covers over. Um, we had actual pebbles from the friend of our garden that we gave to Jersey Lee. Um, most things were just kind of things that you find around in thrift stores, like old cups and things like that, little rubber balls for the peas. The one thing that I can think of um, that's not really real is the door knocker, right before the the ladies come in is just a huge chunk of wood that I got to hit off on the side of the stage, so that's not actually a real door knocker. Um, yes, as our lovely director said, the sword was very real that Jacob had to um, wield. So yeah, when he took those out, um, we definitely made sure that he was comfortable with it and didn't slice. I don't think it's sharp anymore, so he, he wasn't worried about slicing his hand open or anything, but we definitely had to make sure that he never actually pointed it at anybody. And it was mostly sheathed throughout the first act, and then it was gone through the second act. So we didn't have to really worry about that, although it kind of got in the way during the Pebble song, but... That's something you just have to deal with as an actor. It's props getting in the way. <laughs> uh, cards were just an old deck of cards. A very, very old deck of cards. Um, mm -hmm. As for that, I think, uh, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. Are there any times that you've had to deal with props again with Mary and her pee that either something went wrong or you forgot a prop or it broke in your hands or anything fun like that? The mug, the, the, the goblet. Oh, yeah. the time that yeah. it wasn't glued down and it was glass, and I knocked into the table and it fell. And luckily, I think it was coming off stage. Mm -hmm. It happened on stage. Coming off stage, it just fell off the table and then just shattered everywhere. And I think after that, we didn't use glass anymore. No. I just remember coming out with a broom and trying during the show to be very slick about being like, oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> sweepy, yeah. sweepy, sweepy. That, that was, and then. I think we talked about this earlier about the tripping on the edge of the flat and then rolling across the stage and my crown went flying into the music pit. That was Aww. interesting. But uh, oh, there's always some kind of a little thing. That, but, but you know when you've been long enough? Woo. Please. <laughs> Sorry, they're, com they're coming for me. <laughs> yes, they are. I'll take you away. Huh? Um, when, when you do this long enough, and, and even even when you haven't done it that many times, you get to, you get that feeling, you get to know um, how to overcome those things. I mean, you have to, you're on the stage and you, you just, you're making a fantasy for people. So you just, you go with what, what you can think of at the time. I think that uh, with, like with the P, you know, so I said there's a P there, whether you see it or not, sorry, it's there. <laughs> things like that. Our director said they found a replacement cup during a New Orleans trip. There you go. Ah, it was a very nice one. Too. Was a very nice one. I Anybody think it's else? why actors also beg for props early on. Yeah. Like once they put down their script and they're able to feel they're fairly confident with their lines, they want to be able to handle things so that everything looks natural to the audience and comfortable to you. So, so there's less risk of you, you know, dropping something. Or, <laughs> Uh, we have a question from Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Uh, speaking of the cards, David, did you ever perform an actual card trick to wow the other actors? Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I knew how I became a good shuffler. <laughs> yes, you're a great shuffler. Yeah, but uh, I don't think I ever came up with an actual card trick. To, to perform for them on stage. I, speaking, I kind so. of speaking of props, I do remember when you were doing the elf in, uh, in Sleeping Beauty, you used to, to whittle during the beginning oh, yeah. of it. And I remember that you whittled a little 
figurine or something that my I mom did. still I, has. During the run of the <laughs> show, I managed to whittle, I don't know how I did it, an owl. Because your mother collects <laughs> owls. Yeah. At the end of it, I realized every day it was, I was really with a knife, like whittling during scenes, and I created a nice little owl. That's very nice. We still have it. You're so talented. Yeah. We didn't know. You know. No. I can carve a ham out of foam rubber. It's true. Yeah. Well, wow, that's a talent. Yeah. <laughs> I did talk at a couple yeah. theaters many years ago, it, like it's an in-between job. And when I started, I prop, prop, prop customs. Customs, so. you used to do customs when I first started with with the storybook. Yeah. As a matter of fact, back in the days of Cheltenham, you did you did most of the costumes I wore in the very first two shows that I did. Yeah, yeah, I sort of went into every angle of the theater, stage yeah. managing, and directing, props, costumes, and, you know. As a matter of fact, my queen gown, um, you supplied that, didn't you? It came from, didn't it, was and, something old from the opera company? And, an opera company that I worked for. They were getting rid of stock. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. So our director said, it's sitting on a storybook office shelf right now, your little owl. Oh, good memory. What's the most fun that you've had making a prop, David? Like, what was your proudest accomplishment? <laughs> I had to make realistic looking sandwiches that weren't real at all, that were like foam rubber and for a production of arsenic and old lace. And the one I'm playing, one of the one of the ants in there was so specific about her hearty. Oh no! That I I must have redone those sandwiches ten times before she was pleased enough to carry them on a stage. Oh wow! It's a little crazy, but but food. For some reason, I I like making food that looks real. Hmm. You know. I'm, well, I'm going to show another little clip of our happy ending of our show. So. I've got my joy. I've got my bride. I've got my boy. I've got my bride. takeaway you took from this show? Are there any good memories? Was there a new love for pebbles and <laughs> audience interactions that you've had? Um, um, to... Come on, girls. I think just the, just the pleasure of working with a cast that was so much fun and going on stage every day and knowing the kids were going to enjoy it. So everyone was so true to what they were doing and so genuine. You could feel the connection with those children right away. So that give and take was, I think, my favorite thing. And laughing backstage, like Chris said, the time in the dressing room and knowing we were all going on stage to spend an hour together and just giving our all and having a blast. I mean, especially with all the dad jokes that are in this show, the audience definitely enjoys this one. Yeah, I get picked on it. I, I love listening to the kids laughter each show and like how each audience they found something different funny every time um that was so much fun this is what were the kids gonna laugh at this time it's always rewarding to, to do a bit and and have them react to it so well and you think i, I did a great job here i, I really made them laugh and, and that's always, that's always important. It always makes you feel really good when you know that what you've done came across the way you wanted it to. And then of course, working with everyone. David, you know I love you. And, and, and the girls and everybody in this cast, 
And I have to say, for all the years that I've worked in Storybook, I don't think I've ever worked with a cast that wasn't wonderful. We've always all got along, and everybody's always been friendly and, and, and I don't know, just pleasant to be with. And you ladies, especially, I really enjoyed working with you. I'd never worked with you before on anything. And um, it was absolutely, yes, I love you too. It was absolutely a pleasure, and I hope to get the chance to work with you guys again sometime. David, always, always. <laughs> Christina, news, right? Right, right. Um, yeah. no, I, I definitely was going to go back because we were talking about this earlier, David, how backstage was so warm and welcoming and so much fun to do um, a show with people that you get along with so well. Um, but I think children's theater, more than any other kind of theater, you, you get this sense of, uh, you sometimes forget as an actor that your job is a service job. You're here to provide a service to other people. And in children's theater, it's instantaneous. The kids will shout, they'll laugh, they'll cry. They'll, they'll, they'll let you know that they're appreciating what you are giving to them. And uh, it is very rewarding because traditional audiences know that they have to stay quiet and they have to clap quietly. You know, But kids, if they like you, man, they're gonna tell you in the middle of your song. <laughs> if they don't like you, they'll tell you in the middle of your song. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very rewarding, and this, this show specifically was very rewarding to perform in. I just remember uh, there were a couple times when Jacob has his little stands at the end of act one where he kind of is talking to himself, but he's talking to the audience as well. And he's contemplating, is she the one? Is she my princess bride? And there's a little voice from the audience going, yes, <laughs> yes. And I just like, every time it's just like, mm, so cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and finding finding a, a second level because you've got parents and teachers mm -hmm. and grandparents who are with the children to keep them entertained and amused so that it's not just, so it can read at two different levels so that when you hear the adults laughing as well or something different than the kids laugh at, that's a great feeling too, because you realize, okay, I'm, I'm making the people who are paying for the tickets have a great time too, you know, which is important. And yeah. that yeah. puts things in there all the time that that might not necessarily make the kids laugh, but the adults can relate to. Some yeah, the word the, word humor. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The kids especially are a more involved with the physical. Yeah. The Jersey Lee thing. Yes, especially your line, uh, Jersey Lee and you, perfect together. Yeah, that was fun. That's and you would nice. always hear the little moans mm. in the audience, and the adults going, oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the other one, Jersey Lee Lewis. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're a lot of fun. They're a lot, a lot of fun. Well, I'm going to kind of wrap things up here, and uh, as a tradition, well, I'm beginning the tradition with our broadcast that uh, I'd like to ask a would you rather question with our uh, group here. Uh -oh. So, if you were not quarantined, if it was normal life as usual, would you rather? This is all for Prince Lewis here. Would you rather journey to the wonders of the world, sail out on the open sea, or stay at home maybe with your pebbles? <laughs> hmm. I think I would pick the open sea. I think I would like to, to it would be very peaceful. Yes. There'd be dolphins, there'd be seagulls. It'd be nice. I feel like the sea might make me sick, so I'm gonna go <laughs> and let's see the wonders of the world. Yeah. Mm. Mar Marianne? Oh yes, definitely wonders of the world. Oh, actually, I like the sea too, so I guess it would be one of those two, or maybe a combination of both. David. Sitting home, I've done enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, I think wonders of the world. I'm sorry. No. I think wonders of the world. I love being moved by seeing something that I've never seen before. Mm. It like changes you. Which yeah. I love. Especially when you see other cultures, it's always yeah. interesting and, and eye-opening to see how different other cultures are from ours and how they live. And, and it's, it's very, very interesting. Julian brings up a good point. Maybe the sea can be one of the wonders of the world. Exactly. You yeah. find a mermaid, maybe. Maybe. Oh. Or it can take you to one of the wonders of the world. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. And we'll see Chris, like in a small dinghy somewhere floating around in the ocean. 
<laughs> I'd be a little pirate. Uh, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, David, Jeff says, I have a woman who played the ant in Arsenic Old Days on the phone. She would like to speak with you. Tell her her stinking sandwiches will be done soon. <laughs> because they never looked like hearty roast beef, she told me. Um, so, they did eventually. Well, on thank that you for note, that. On that note, I'm going to thank everybody for watching. And remember yeah. to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Remember that we do have our story time at Storybook on our YouTube pages, which I know a bunch of our actors here have done. A co I know Marion did a story, Chris did a story, and David did a story, and I as well did a story. So look Your on. turn, Laura. Yeah, we're turn, Laura. No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll contact you. We'll contact you about it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we all read a story uh, on our uh, YouTube page, so check those out if you like to do that. And please, please donate with PayPal at storybookmusical.org. We'd love to keep doing this for you. And if you'd like, we have our personal character greetings. If anybody would like to get a character greeting from one of our lovely actors who so kindly volunteer their time, it is $25 to Storybook Musical Theater. Just let us know what character and to whom we are sending it out to, and we love to do that for you. Uh, let's see, uh, King and Queen, do you have any parting words for your subjects of the kingdom? I don't know, David. Who would like to go first? You. <laughs> you. You have better things to say than I do. I just wish everyone. Oh, and he's uh -oh. frozen. He's frozen, so it's up to you, Queen. <laughs> David frozen a little bit. Um, Life doesn't move much more from the show, does it? These <laughs> <laughs> things do go wrong sometimes. Um, I would say we really enjoy doing shows for you, and uh, we hope that you continue to come and see us. Um, it, it, it warms our hearts to be able to do this for you, but it's also very selfish for us too because we love working with each other, and 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 the shows are just done so well and and we're such a great little family and we would really hope that when all of this is done and you guys can come out to the theater again that we'll see your little things and david what were you going to say before Could you froze i turn mary in <laughs> yes dear well you froze before it was my fault dear um i i guess what i would like to find out is how much we missed all of you it means the world to us to get to share these stories and to have as much fun as we're allowed to have doing that. And I wish you all to stay safe. Try not to get too bored. There are a lot of books to read and a lot of things that you can do while you're stuck inside. And uh, keep wearing the mask, washing your hands, and we'll come out of this soon and then we'll all get together. As decreed by your king. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us. Oh, uh, hey. watch us next time to see the cast of Avengers in Toyland. We'll give you the updates on that coming up soon. All right, goodbye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Love you guys. Bye.